you, welcome back, it's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel, I'll be joined by Mike Irvin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 111, slowest time within two seconds of the fastest time. Okay, I, one, two, three, four, Birchie sends this question, what is the slowest time that's within two seconds of the fastest time by sector? This is uh, racing information, so whoever had the fastest time, uh, we want to find the slowest time. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go way back to a function I haven't used since the mid-90s, the old database functions. And I'm going to ask for equal d min. All right, with the database functions, we have to specify the database. That's the whole thing, including the headings. So I'll press F4 there, comma, which field? I think they're numbered 1, 2, so this is the second field. And then the criteria. The criteria range has to have uh, at least one of the headings. Uh, so we want from sector, sector 1, and that should give us the fastest time, the minimum time for each sector, right? Okay, good, that's working. Now, I'm just going to take the sector that I enter over there in E, and I'm going to copy it over. Why am I copying it over? Uh, because this range, this range right here, is about to become another criteria range. And so, we want to find times that are within two seconds of the fastest. So, I'm going to build on the fly a criteria range that says it's less than maybe even less than or equal to ampersand this number plus 2. All right, so see that that yellow range now says, hey, in the sector column, we want sector 1. In the numbers column, we're looking for less than or equal to 25.5499. And then here, I want equal D max of the same database, comma, the field is the second field, comma, the criteria is now this 4 range area. And we have it, okay? And if we change this, sector 2, sector 3, all right? Everything's good. But the problem with these database functions is you need these kludgy criteria ranges here to get the answer. Ah, check this out. I'm going to thank uh, Professor Simon Beninga for giving me this idea. Uh, we are going to build a table that returns my answer. I'm going to select this entire range back on the data tab, what if analysis data table, uh, I'm only going to use the column input cell and say that it is pointing to right there. So, usually in a data table, we have something up there in that top left hand corner, not in this case, click OK and we have all three answers. There you go. Uh, Mike, let's see what you have. Mr. Excel, now I know why my life has been so less well off over the last nine months because I haven't been doing duels with you. This is just awesome. Two D functions and then a data table. And what's so cool about this is these D functions are great, but their limitation, as you mentioned, that criteria argument needs this setup and you can't copy it down a formula. But this two Ds and a data table, what an ingenious solution. Oh man. All right, I'm going to go over to this sheet. And I still want to try and build a formula that I can put in the cell and copy down, right? Now, the first thing is we're, I need to calculate the min for each sector. So I'm simply going to use min if. Oh, wait a second. There's no min if function, right? There's count if, sum if, and all that, but no min if. No problem. We could use the min function with an if and use control shift enter. Um, but in 2010, there's a great new function called aggregate. Now I'll show you the min if in just a moment, but let's check out this new function aggregate. Now it's great, there's 19 functions. And guess what? One of them is min. So I'm simply going to select this 5. Oh, but wait a second. No, that won't work either. Know why? Because functions 1 to 13, mo.single and above, they can't handle array calculations. And we have an array calculation because we don't want all the numbers. We want just the numbers from this column where it's equal to the sector, right? So we can't use that one. Luckily, functions 14 to 19 can handle array calculations, and we can simply use small, number 15. Now, small for number 15, we'll just, when we get to the K, we'll say give us the first smallest, which is the same as min. Now, comma, our array calculation is going to have some errors for the, so for the second argument here, options, we want number 6, comma. Now, array, 
the trick to the array is if you have some numbers, you put the numbers in and then divide by the criteria. So the numbers, control shift down on F4, those are going to be our numbers. And then we divide. Our condition is anything equal to sector 1. So I'm going to put open parentheses, highlight the column, F4 equal to relative cell reference. The parentheses are important because this equal sign calculates in Excel's order of operations way at the bottom after division. So we want to force that equal sign first. Now check this out. If I highlight this condition right here and hit F9, of course, it's going to give us trues and falses. So now we're going to have numbers divided by true, which will be 1, and numbers divided by false, which is 0. And dividing by 0 will give us a divide by 0 error. Control Z. Now I'm going to click on this screen here, boop, and then highlight that whole um, argument and F9. Notice, divide by 0. What a cool way to isolate only the numbers we want. So the divide by 0, in essence, gets rid of all the numbers that don't match our criteria. And that 6 absolutely will ignore those divide by zeros. Control Z, comma, 1 for k. That gives us the smallest. And watch this, Control Enter. I didn't use Control Shift Enter. I don't see any curly brackets up there. And I copy it down. There are our min values for each one of these sectors. Now we have two conditions. Now we need to find the biggest value or the slowest time that's within two seconds of the fastest. So now we have to relook through here and say, is anything less than or equal to that plus two seconds? And then the second condition we'll have is, is it in the sector? All right, guess what? I'm using the aggregate again, not 15 for small, but 14 for large, comma, 6 to ignore the divide by zeros. The numbers, remember the numbers come first, Control Shift down on F4, divided by, now we have two conditions, so I'm putting two parentheses. The first one, Control Shift down on F4, anything in there equal to our sector. And I'm going to use Boolean multiplying. I've got a bunch of trues and falses, and I'm going to multiply them by a bunch of other trues and falses. These trues and falses will be from the numbers. And I'm going to say, if those numbers are less than or equal to the min we've already calculated, plus, and I put the two seconds, I'm going to right arrow right there, and F4. So now our criteria is anything in here is less than or equal to two seconds above the slowest. All right, that's our second condition. Close parentheses twice. Guess what? If I highlight this, because we're doing Boolean multiplying, it won't give me trues and falses. It'll give me ones and zeros. Anytime you do a math operation on, I'm going to hit F9, trues and falses, it gets them to ones and zeros. So those ones represent where we got both conditions met, Control Z. Now I'm going to click on this argument, F9. Absolutely beautiful. In essence, we're using division and divide by 0 to filter out all the numbers we don't want or that don't meet our two conditions. Control Z. I'm back to this K, comma, 1 for the biggest, the max. And Control Enter, no curly brackets, and copy it down. So there we have our values. Now what would you do if you didn't have 2010? Well, go out and buy it because the aggregate's so cool. No, no. You simply use min and the if. Notice the condition comes in the logical test, and then we dump the numbers in based on trues and falses into the min. Over here, we're using max. We have two ifs. First, second set of trues and falses, then dump these numbers into the max. All right, I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Excel. My, my heart skipped a beat when you uh, started talking about min if. It's like, what? Oh, no. OK, we're going to use aggregate. That was a great array formula. I love the fact that you can just copy that down. Reminded me I need to come out and pre-order your book, Control-Shift-Enter, publication date June 1st. Can't wait for that to get here. Uh, great, great solution. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.